I could always have got away at the start, ahead of Richard. Uh, mm -hmm. He knows that himself. Like, uh, uh, just uh, my bike always started very, very easily. I had it down to just three steps and it started. So, but usually I got about maybe two laps before he came past. But this day, there was a lot of laps going on, and I thought, this, you know, Richard's not just going as quick today, or something has happened, or whatever. But I, I think I was leading, and uh, about halfway through the race, and uh, I peeled off into this second gear corner. And I, and I remember this as if it was yesterday. The bowl Richard came past, and he was literally. I've told this story many times. He was literally holding the bike against the ground and the sparks were flying it the whole way around this. It was along his right hand corner. And I thought, well, I couldn't do that, so no <laughs> point. I'm not win this race. Neither could I, but he, he was actually holding the bike against the, 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 the road. He couldn't get it down any further. The ferry wouldn't allow him. Quite, he was quite fearless, but safe with it, you know. As it so happened, we moved from the braid to Ballymena when I was about 12. And then when I left school, uh, I got a job in this in the garage in Ballymena. I wanted to be a motor mechanic because I knew if I was a motor mechanic, I could work at my own bike when I got it. So I got this job in, in Malcolm Templeton's in Ballymena. In the summer evenings, uh, I would have walked down the streets of Ballymena and down to this garage that I eventually worked in uh, this is when I was maybe 12 or 13, and in the summer evenings, Malcolm, he was racing an AGS at the time, and I could see through this big window him uh, working at the bike inside. And I stood and glared in all evening in the hope that he would ask me in. You know, I'd have cleaned it, I'd, but he never asked me in. <laughs> the Northwest 200. I have to say, I, was, I just loved the Northwest because it was a, it was an international race, and the, there was massive crowds at it. Even back in the sixties, there was massive crowds, and uh, they always seemed to get fairly decent weather. Funny Thursday night was a very, very wet night. It was a, and it was windy and all sorts, and I had the quickest lap in practice, uh, which meant I was in poor position for Saturday's race. Ralph Bryans was there. He was riding, and he was riding a Honda, not the Pucker four or six cylinder, but it was a lot quicker than all the rest of us. Anyway, it came race day. It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, and I wheeled the bike onto the piss pole position, feeling ten foot tall, and uh, the flag dropped, and off we went. And I went straight into the lead, round Henry's corner, through Port Stewart, uh, got to Coleraine, still leading. Uh, Shell Hill, Mother's Cross, all around that, arrived at Metropole Corner, still leading, and I sat up to break, just for the corner. And I think I dropped from first to about tenth. Everybody seemed to outbreak me. But for some reason or other, it didn't, you know, it didn't, didn't annoy me at all. Just around uh, Metropole Corner, thinking, well, this is a race. So I think I gathered back one or two places uh, on the coast road, only probably one or two. I remember Ralph must have had a bad start because it was the second lap on the way to Coleraine. and I remember him going past. Uh, but there was about nine or ten riders that day all sort of swapping places and it was, it was active. It was a very enjoyable race because one lap you were third and the next lap you were eighth and I mean, they just kept swapping places. And this went on all day. It was quite a long race then. With about three laps to go, this, there was an Australian rider in the field called Jack Finlay. And Jack and I pulled out a wee bit of a lead on this bunch, but only a wee bit. Uh, Ralph w had gone, so he was out of the equation. Uh, and I followed Jack Finlay around on the last but one lap and uh, there was only one place I knew if I wanted to finish second, which to me was as good as winning it then. If I wanted to finish second, there was only one place I could pass him. 
and that is, uh, I used to call it Primrose, but it's the left hander now after the Juniper Caravan site. Uh, and then the road was reasonably narrow and, and banks around each side and all, and there was a little bridge and what have you. And I followed Jack round on, on the last but one lap, and uh, just to see what my chances were of getting past before the flag. So this, this left-hand bend after the Juniper Bridge was the only one. So got round Metropole Corner in the last lap in, in third place, and uh, which meant Ralph was leading, Jack Finley was second, and I was third. And uh, I thought, now, at, at Juniper Hill, I'll have to be doing things right. And that's exactly what happened. I just made a point of doing everything right, up, accelerated out of the bridge, got another gear, and I had noticed, you see, the reason I decided on this place, Jack Finley seemed to be easing his bike off slightly for the left-hand corner. And uh, I could go around it as hard as the bike was going. It wasn't flat out, it was still in third gear. Uh, but it was flat out in third. And uh, Jack did his usual stunt of easing off slightly, very slightly. And I rode around the outside of him and got into second. Then we got to it, this primrose, the long left-hander before the, the last corner. And I'm, I le leaned over, and I'm pretty near the curb, and here, the next thing I saw was a, this wheel coming up alongside me. So uh, I managed to stay there and, and not let him through and uh, finish second. So I was actually very pleased with that race. It was one of my better races. Didn't have too many, but that was one of the better ones. I probably went on a bit too much, but things that weren't, weren't important, like I had some very good races with these pair of ginks here.